In this video, we will process and adjust a traverse in Leica GeoOffice. This traverse was run with a Leica TS50 total station with SmartWorks software. The traverse was run with assumed coordinates with a ground scale factor of 1. Now, part of what we're going to do is we're going to adjust, we're going to adjust that traverse to Alabama West state plane coordinates and we're also going to utilize this, the state plane zone information to compute combine scale and elevation factors for each traverse setup and then apply that information to our measurements. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll back out to my main menu. I already have a project here in like a geo office called Aldot Control. And our traverse was run between points 63DQ and 63DT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, copy these points and put them into a separate project. That way I keep my, my control points uh, in a job where the, all, all the information is pristine. So I'll hit edit here on my, on my menu bar and say copy. I will close this project and I have created another project called Aldot Traverse. Now this is a blank project so all I have to do is hit edit and paste. Now previously I did set this up to um, uh, be the Alabama West coordinate system and since this information was all uh, collected in the field in metric I will go to my tools and my options and I'll check my units and make sure that I am in fact in meters. So there we go, say OK. So I'll go back to my main menu, now we'll see our four points and I now want to import my raw data. So I'll go to import, raw data and I know that this information was collected in traverse number one or in, I'm sorry, in job number one. So I'll go ahead and import. And I will assign this to Aldot Traverse. Now I can look at my settings. And I have both TPS information. That's going to be our raw measurements. And then our points. That would be any points that we imported. I look at my points. And in this case, we did not uh, import any points into the job. If I wanted to, I could look again here at my TPS tab. And that would actually show me my raw measurements that I have uh, collected. And once I'm satisfied that I have all my information, I will assign that to a job. Now, if you remember, I made a note that the, the original coordinates or the original traverse was run um, with assumed coordinates. And you'll notice we do have ties. That's because we did occupy our control points in the field, and they were correctly named in the job file. And so what we need to do first is because we want to compute combined scale and elevation factors for each or we want the software to compute combined scale and elevation factors for each traverse point the first thing we would need to do is process this traverse without adjustment so that these points are in fact correctly related in state plane to uh, our control so the first thing we would do here is we go to TPS processing and we would select our traverse and actually let me back up a step we would go back up here to setups and we would drag a window across all of our setups and highlight them and we could have also done a control A on our keyboard and then we would right click and make sure that we check allow automatic updates that allows the uh, the program to make changes to the reference coordinates of your setups uh, the next thing we would do is then go back to Traverse and we would right click and go to our processing parameters and in this case if you remember I said we wanted to process this first with no adjustment so I will we'll set uh, my adjustment method in each of these fields to no adjustment or on our vertical to no distribution. Okay. The next step would then be to right click on the Traverse and go to Properties and what I can do here is I will do a recalculate. Now, if, you're, if your information is correctly input in the field, your point numbers, uh, when you do a recalculate, it will compute a closure. And it, and it did compute a scale factor. And that's, again, remember that we our original information was all run with a ground or a project scale factor of 1. And, of course, if you're familiar with uh, state plane, we need to... Uh, take into consideration our projection and our elevation scale factors and compute a combined scale factor to take those ground run distances down to the grid. 
So you notice that our that our 2D accuracy, that's our horizontal accuracy of our traverse, is actually not very good, and that is because of the difference between grid and ground. And we have almost um, 25 hundredths of a meter of error. And again, uh, as you'll notice when I finish the adjustment of this traverse, we're going to have a much better closure once we apply our ground scale factor. But but again, the process right now is we just want to get our tr our setup points of our traverse correctly related to our control. So I'll press OK. And when I do that, if I go back to my view and edit screen, you'll now see that all of our points are in fact related to our control points. Now, what we want to do is we want to have our Leica Geo Office software compute the combined scale and elevation factor for each of our setups. Now, you can do this a couple of ways. Uh, you could uh, come here to this screen, excuse me, I'm in pan mode, and highlight all of my points and right click and say compute com average combined factor. And if you wanted to, you could take this average combined factor and apply it uh, as a single factor for each measurement. Or the software actually gives you the option to have allow the software itself to compute individual combined factors for each of your traverse points. And that's what I'm going to do in this example. So I will go here to my main view and edit menu. I will go to view observations. And this pulls up a list of all the traverse uh, stations and all the points that we located. Now again, you'll notice there's lots of information. We have the from and to for each measurement, which face your instrument in was in, the date and time when the measurement was taken, your horizontal vertical angles, your slope distances, horizontal distances. If I right click up here on one of these words, you, I can go to view and you can see several other things that is not shown on our screen that we could add. Also, as a way here, um, as just more information, if there was something that I didn't want to see, if I didn't want to see horizontal distances, I could actually come here and say hide, and that would get rid of that column. Uh, a lot of this information is editable, uh, such as the type of prism you use, your instrument height or your target height. Uh, even your, if, you, if I scroll over here to the right, you'll notice that we have an atmospheric parts per million, and that means that on our instrument in the field as we were taking our measurements, we entered a temperature and pressure in a parts per million field and it actually computed, computed the parts per million adjustment for our distance measurements. Now the screen, the field that we want to take a look at is our geometric parts per million. Now you say, okay, that's set to zero. Why is that? Well, that's because we're not applying a scale factor of any uh, combined elevation and scale factor to these measurements. Remember again that we set the job up in the field. We ran it on assumed coordinates with a scale factor of one. So what we can do is if we right click and we go to edit geometric parts per million, you'll notice that you get a pop-up box and I can set this up to automatically compute the combined eleva elevation and scale factor. And what that does is the program takes the position of, this, of the setup of the total station and computes a combined scale of elevation factor for that point. Now, You'll notice down here that this is a geometric parts per million, and what this does is, what the program does is it actually takes uh, that combined scale and elevation factor um, and divides it by one million to come up with this factor. Now, I don't want to do it for just one point, so I want to do it for all the points in the file. So let me cancel that, and I'll click here in the window, and then on my keyboard, I will do a control A, which selects everything, or if I wanted, I could drag a window across that. Now, the problem with that is, is I have to, since I have information off the bottom of the screen, I have to make sure that I go down and, and get all of, the, all of the points. And so the easiest way to do that is just on your keyboard to do a control A. And then I will right click anywhere on the blue and I'll do edit geometric parts per million. And again, I'm going to select manual. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to select the box with manual and set that to automatic. And when I do that, it comes up with a note <clears throat> which the geometric parts per million has been changed and all the horizontal distances will be corrected with an effect on the measured coordinates. It gives me a chance to, if I made a mistake, to say, no, I don't want to do that. In this case, I do want to go ahead and do that, so I'll press yes. And you'll notice now that it has a geometric parts per million and that changes throughout the project. 
right? So what that's going to do is when I reduce, uh, when I reduce and adjust my traverse, it's going to scale my distances by that factor. So I can go ahead and close that window, and then I'll go back to TPS processing. I will go here to my traverse, and I'll right click and I go to my processing parameters. So I am going to do a simple compass rule adjustment. Excuse me. I am going to balance my angles. And I'm going to equally, equally distribute the, air, the angular error. And then with the heights, now in this particular case, no elevations uh, were run. So I'm going to not dist do any distribution on my height. So I'll say OK. So I now have my processing parameters set correctly. So now what I'll do is I will open up my traverse. I will right click, go to properties. And once again, I want to tell it to recalculate. So now in this process, again, need to remember that if you correctly run this in the field, now you, your, your initial back, initial instrument setup and backside are correct and your closing uh, instrument setup and, and closing angle are correct. There's, we really don't have to specify uh, you know, what our beginning and ending points are, what our closing points are. As long as that's correctly done, all we need to do is recalculate. When we recalculate, you'll notice, if you remember, our original closure was 1 in 12,700 and that is now dramatically better. 1D accuracy doesn't change. And so now if I pull down to the bottom, you'll notice that down here below where we did have 0.25 meter error um, in, in, our, in our departure, and I think we had a one centimeter error in our latitude, we now only have three centimeters in our uh, departure and one centimeter in our latitude. And so now we have adjusted our traverse, so I'll press OK. And now I do have adjusted values or, or uh, process values on my coordinates. I can go to view and edit. Not much changed on this screen. If I go to my points, I now have northing and eastings that are adjusted to my control. And as one final step, if I wanted to take a look and make sure this overlay correctly, I could press our Google Earth button. Uh, this will open Google Earth on your machine and plot these points. Uh, and overlay them over the Google Earth map. So give that just a second to finish up. And I'll drag the screen over so you can see it. And you'll notice we do have our points run along the roadway.